Thank you. We'd like to welcome everyone to our Mesa City Council meeting for the evening of April the 19th of 2021. All of our council are present for this meeting. At this council meeting, we will be taking comments from the public both over the telephone and the internet. You can find multiple ways to participate on the first page of the council agenda. Additionally, if you want to speak, you should submit a blue card one hour before the meeting. Again, you can find all of that information on the first page of the agenda and at mesaaz.gov forward slash blue card. We will begin our meeting uh, this evening with an invocation offered by Unbreen Cosme with the Islamic Education Foundation of Arizona, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. So, uh, Mr. Cosme, are you with us on the phone? I know we're, we're beginning this meeting uh, maybe 20 minutes late, so I hope we haven't lost uh, our invocation. Uh, Umbreen Cosme, are you with us? All right, well, alternatively, we'll begin this meeting with a moment of silence followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. So please stand for a, a moment of silence followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And again, I apologize to Mr. Cosme if we um, lost him because of our, the tardiness of our meeting this evening. Uh, we will begin our meeting today with some awards and recognitions. First on our awards and recognitions agenda is Dave Richens, the President and Chief Executive Officer of United Food Bank, who will address the Council regarding the partnership between the City of Mesa and United Food Bank during the pandemic. Dave, good to see you. Good to see you, Mayor and Council. It's an honor to be with you this evening to celebrate, uh, uh, in a way, the one year that we spent together distributing food to the city of Mesa uh, residents during the pandemic. Many of you, I hope, have received your celebratory t-shirt celebrating our one year. Many food banks around the country had to hire additional staff to accomplish what we did in our partnership. Um, we wanted to express gratitude to the city for stepping right up, uh, addressing the issue uh, with some uh, very targeted surveys to find out what people were concerned with and then uh, digging right in. I have to say a big, give a big shout out to Mark Hirschberg, uh, digging right in and finding solutions and ways that we could work together to be able to distribute uh, 5 million pounds of food to uh, our neighbors and friends during the pandemic. We could not have done it without you. Your, your staff at the Mesa Convention Center became like our own family. We got to know them very well. They were exemplary. They learned how to uh, unload and load our trucks with forklifts and pallet jacks, and uh, they packed food bags, and uh, we were able to deliver a lot of food and meals uh, through that program as well. So I'm just here tonight to say thank you. I have a little slide that represents some of the uh, statistics here uh, of what we accomplished together. We did 58 uh, distributions together at the height of the pandemic in the summertime. We did some extra distributions on Wednesday night, as you'll recall. Um, we served over 81,000 households. 73% of those had Mesa addresses that they provided. Uh, so really targeted service to our residents. There were no injuries. We, had, we served over 70,000 cars during that year. Uh, the city uh, staff there at the convention center and the food bank got along great. We had several cars that died. Another big shout out to Mesa PD. Their uh, traffic unit was absolutely spectacular, uh, helping us in every turn. In fact, uh, we had to have a few few cars towed off. Uh, we Chief Mary Col uh, Mary Camelli performed a Heimlich maneuver on somebody that was choking in the parking lot, and we had even a couple of DUIs. It was a, quite an adventure, but again, we could not have accomplished so much and so uh, in, in that year uh, long without the partnership between Mesa, uh, the city of Mesa and United Food Bank. So from the whole staff here at United Food Bank, thank you to the mayor and council for your support, and especially 
thank you to the staff at the city of Mesa, both at the convention center and the city manager's office and, I'm, and the police department. I'm sure I'm leaving out a few, uh, many departments came and volunteered. Uh, and so we really appreciate all those city departments who came over and worked with us uh, during the last year to, to serve so many. Thank you. Thank you, David. I, I, obviously, we need to say thank you right back at you for the, the great work that United Food Bank has done over uh, not just this past year, but for many years, but particularly this year. I think I know all of our, our council has been present at the food distribution events. Uh, they were amazing. Uh, the, the efficiency of those operations, uh, I was, it seemed like people would just kind of pump their brakes and there was 50 pound of, pounds of food in their trunk, you know, before they knew it. So. Uh, thank you to you and your staff for rising to this occasion uh, and so and for serving the people of Mesa so well over the past year and I know you will continue to do that so we that we're looking forward to continued collaborations I, I know you have new homeless initiatives and many things that you're trying to accomplish with residents in Mesa and we stand ready to stand with you to accomplish many of those goals great thank you it's always been a good partnership and and we appreciate United Food Bank very much thank you, thank you. Um, also today, uh, we have one proclamation on our agenda. Arbor Day is on April the 30th, and I'm proud to say that this year marks Mesa's 11th year as a Tree City USA. Tonight, we are highlighting the West Mesa River Community Heat Project, which aims to address urban heat by increasing shade trees provided, I'm sorry, increasing shade provided by trees. This project is funded by a grant from the Arizona Department of Forestry and Fire Management and focuses on Mesa neighborhoods along the south side of the Salt River. Here to tell us more about the project is Mashavi Perivia, I'm sorry, Peria from the West Mesa Community Heat Project. Welcome, Mr. Peria. Thank you for helping us have a, a, a cooler city. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you very much. Can you hear me well? Yes, we can. All right. Uh, well, I think you, you already mentioned it, right, about, the, about this uh, amazing event that we are, uh, about this amazing project that we are doing in West Mesa. We are very excited. Uh, we are working with different or community organizations as part of ASU as well, and the Arizona Sustainability Alliance. Uh, our project as right now is more than planting trees, is to engage the community, right? Um, our plan is that uh, this project is in, in a couple months is gonna be owned by the community. The community, not only they are gonna decide where these trees are gonna be planted, as right now, uh, our goal is to plant 100 trees, but more than 100 trees, we wanna have more, many, many conversations with the community. Uh, one value that, uh, that this project is uh, using is meeting people where they are. So in our capacity, we have been knocking doors we have been having presentations with community members. We have been talking about people, about heat, right? As you as you may know, right, uh, last year, it was one of the hottest year in, in, the, in the county. So this is something that we wanna stress and we wanna change. So for that, I wanna thank uh, the city of Mesa for, for this opportunity, but also I wanna invite them for, uh, for, for our meetings and for our conversations. Uh, and as you said, this, uh, this is a grant that it was funded by the US Forest Services, right? And is as also, as you mentioned, right? This is only on West Mesa. And the name of this project is Cool, cool Islands Neighborhoods. So what we are trying to do is we are trying to reduce the heat in these communities. Thank you. Okay. Well, thanks again, Mr. Perea, for the, the great work you're doing uh, in, in West Mesa. That's a, that's a great program and happy to issue a proclamation um, uh, acknowledging that. Uh, while we're talking about Arbor Day, we also want to mention that Thursday, April the 22nd, is Earth Day. This year, I had the opportunity to join other mayors across the state in a joint pro uh, promotional effort of Earth Day events to raise awareness of municipal efforts and share collaborative programming. You can learn more about this and a list of over 50 ways to celebrate both Earth Day and Arbor Day at maceaz.gov forward slash sustainability. Uh, the next item on our agenda for this meeting is to take action on the consent agenda. Uh, our first, uh, Mr. Christopher, would you please come forward and uh, read the consent agenda? 
Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. These are the items on the consent agenda. All items listed with an asterisk will be considered as a group by the City Council and will be enacted with one motion. There will be no separate discussion unless a Council Member or Citizen request, in which event the item will be removed from the consent agenda and considered as a separate item. Item 2, approval of minutes of previous meetings is written. Item 3A, act on liquor license application for Flights, Wine and Tap Room 2613 North Thunderbird Circle. Item 3B, act on liquor license application for Poor Wine and Tap Room 2905 South Ellsworth Road. Item 3C, act on liquor license application for Circle K 9230 East University Drive. Item 3D, act on liquor license application for Circle K 24 West Broadway Road. Item 3E, act on liquor license application for Quick Run 2659 West Guadalupe Road. Item 3F, act on liquor license application for Quick Trip 3547 East Southern Avenue. Item 4A, act on contract to purchase children's book shelving for the Library Services Department. Item 4B, act on contract for Red Mountain Park Expansion Project, pre-construction services and construction manager at risk. This project is funded by 2018 general obligation bonds. Item 4C, act on one-year renewal of the term contract for private jail services for the Mesa Police Department. Item 5A, act on resolution approving and authorizing the submittal of a grant application by Arizona Burn Foundation to the Fort McDowell Yavapai Nation and authorizing the city manager to accept and administer subsequent awarded funds as a pass-through grant. Item 5B, act on resolution approving and authorizing submittal of a grant application by Child Crisis Arizona to the Fort McDowell Yavapai Nation and authorizing the city manager to accept and administer subsequent awarded funds as a pass-through grant. Item 5C, act on resolution approving and authorizing the submittal of a grant application by Gene Lewis Boxing Club and Youth Center to the Fort McDowell Yavapai Nation and authorizing the city manager to accept and administer subsequent awarded funds as a pass-through grant. Item 5D, Act on Resolution Approving and Authorizing the Submittal of a Grant Application by Mesa United Way's Veterans Resource Center to the Fort McDowell Yavapai Nation and authorizing the City Manager to accept and administer subsequent awarded funds as a pass-through grant. Item 5E, Act on Resolution Approving and Authorizing Submittal of a Grant Application by Save the Family Foundation of Arizona to the Fort McDowell Yavapai Nation and authorizing the City Manager to accept and administer subsequent awarded funds as a pass-through grant. Item 5F, Act on Resolution Approving and Authorizing the Submittal of a Grant Application by Child Crisis Arizona to the Yachin Indian Community and authorizing the City Manager to accept and administer subsequent awarded funds as a pass-through grant. Item 5G, Act on Resolution Approving and Authorizing Submittal of a Grant Application by Gene Lewis Boxing Club and Youth Center to the Yachin Indian Community and authorizing the City Manager to accept and administer subsequent awarded funds as a pass-through grant. Item 5A, checked on resolution approving and authorizing submittal of a grant application by Save the Family Foundation of Arizona to the Oxygen Indian Community and authorizing the city manager to accept and administer subsequent awarded funds as a pass-through grant. Item 5 I, act on resolution approving and authorizing the city manager to enter into an overhead overlash facilities maintenance agreement with Quest Corporation doing business as CenturyLink QC for a term of 20 years. Item 5J, Act on Resolution, setting May 17, 2021 as a public hearing date to review the proposed fiscal year 2021-2022 annual assessments for the Mesa Town Center Improvement District Number 228. The proposed final assessments do not include any rate increases. Item 5K, Act on Resolution, approving the purchase of and authorizing the city manager to enter into purchase power agreements for a year-round supply of 15 megawatts of firm electric power and associated energy for the city's electric distribution utility for a period of up to five years. Item 5L, Act on Resolution, approving and authorizing the city manager to enter into an intergovernmental agreement with ADOT, the Maricopa Association of Governments for Advanced Construction, authorizing and reimbursement for the Signal Butte Road, Williamsfield to Germain Road Arterial Life Cycle Program Project. A five, item 5M, Act on Resolution, approving and authorizing the city manager to enter into a 2021 Contract 207 fund with the Arizona Governor's Office of Highway Safety to accept grant funds to be used by the Police Department's Forensic Services Division to purchase a triple quadrupole mass spectrometer. Item 5N, act to amend resolution number 11638 to alter the membership format of the Mesa Education and Workforce Development Roundtable in order to include the superintendent of EVID as a standing member. Item 5O, act on resolution authorizing the issuance and sale of general obligation refunding bonds, series 2021. Item 5P, act on resolution authorizing the issuance and sale of general obligation bonds, series 2021. Item 5Q, Act on Resolution Authorizing the Issuance and Sale of Utility Systems Revenue Bonds, Series 2021. Item 5R, Act on Resolution Authorizing the Issuance and Sale of Utility Systems Revenue Refunding Bonds, Series 2021. 
Item 5S, Act on Resolution Authorizing the Sale, Execution, and Delivery of Utility Systems Revenue Obligations Series 2021. Item 6A, Introduction of Ordinance Regarding ZON 20-00877 for property located south of the 202 Red Mountain Freeway and east of Gilbert Road. Rezone to allow for development of a single residence subdivision. Item 6B, Introduction of Ordinance Amending Mesa City Code Title 10, Chapter 8, Section 1, entitled Refusal to Furnish Information or Sign Citation to clarify that civil traffic violators are required to provide full name and date of birth to a citing officer. Item 7A, Act on Ordinance Regarding ANX 20-00463, annexing a portion of 222nd Street within the 6,000 block and a portion of the East Williams Road Williams Field Road right of way within the 10,500 to 11,000 blocks. Item 7B, Act on Ordinance regarding ANX 20 00464, annexing a portion of the South Meridian Road right of way within the 6,000 to 6,400 blocks. Item 7C, Act on Ordinance regarding ZON 20 00628. This is for property located north of Brown Road and east of Val Vista Drive. Rezone to allow for development of two single residence subdivisions. Item 7D, Act on Ordinance regarding ZON 20 00841. This is for property located south of the 202 Red Mountain Freeway and east of Gilbert Road, rezoned to allow for development of a single resident subdivision. Item 7E, Act on Ordinance regarding ZON 20-00842. This is for property located west of the Meridian Road alignment, south of Pecos Road and north of Germain Road. Modification to the existing bonus intensity zone overlay and site plan review to allow development of new industrial buildings within the existing industrial development on the site. And Item 7F, Act on Ordinance amending Title VI of the Mesa City Code Police Regulations by repealing Chapter 10 entitled Public Park Regulations and replacing it with a new Chapter 10 entitled Public Park Regulations, establishing permitting requirements and regulations for events that take place in parks and clarifying provisions which regulate certain activities in the parks. Mayor and Council Members, these are the items on the consent agenda. Thank you, Mr. Christopher. Uh, Ms. Mickelson, have we received any requests to speak on an item on the consent agenda? No requests, Mayor. Okay, thank you. I note that uh, Mr. Luna has made a motion, uh, seconded by uh, Ms. Spilsbury. Council, please vote on the consent agenda. Mr. Thompson, how do you vote? Aye. Thank you. Uh, motion passes unanimously. The next item on our agenda uh, is item 8A. This is to discuss taking action on zoning ordinance 20-00538 for property located on the south side of the 202 Red Mountain Freeway on the, and on the west side of Alma School Road. This is a modification of the planned area development overlay and amending a zoning condition to allow the, for the development of a new office building and parking garage within an existing office development. We've had multiple presentations on this item over the course of several council meetings and study sessions. Uh, council, at this time, would you like any additional uh, staff presentation or information? Mr. Freeman. Thank you, Mayor. I, I think we have some blue cards on this as we well. We do, yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, you know, I just want you to know that, you know, thank, thank you to the neighborhood. They've made a lot of great comments and, and strides in making this the best possibly they can. And I can defer some of the comments to our planning director because I know there's been some updates possibly to the good neighbor policy, as well as I know there's some changes to the architectural uh, side of it for the garage. And I don't know if the uh, uh, applicant's uh, spokesperson is gonna be able to make a presentation and yeah. how you wanna do that, but well, maybe could the planning director give us some insight? Yes, uh, uh, Mr. Apai, if you have anything to add, why don't you do that? And, and then why don't we, we'll, we'll go to the hearing from, uh, I, I think we have some people on the line and some cards to be read, and then we can come back and have council comments and questions at that, si that time. Nana, anything to update us on on this case? Mayor, council, it's, uh, after my presentation to you on Thursday to address three major items that needed to be addressed, which was the um, the good neighbor policy, the landscaping uh, requirements, and also the elevation, improvement to the elevations. We did receive a response from the community um, right after study session on Thursday, which I did send to the applicant. So the applicant has incorporated his response to his presentation that is ready tonight, and he will address the responses from the response from the community. That's all I have to add. Okay, so if I understand you, the applicant that does want to give a presentation with some uh, his response to the, the neighborhood's uh, comments. Mayor, yes, he, okay. is, he does. Uh, thank you. Is the applicant on the on the phone?
I know sometimes we have, uh, it, it, it's necessary to mute on one or two ends of this. So we'll allow some time for the applicant to get on the phone. Mr. Ball, are you on the phone? He should be there. Okay, I'm sure Mr. Baugh is trying fr frantically to get on the phone right now. <laughs> uh, do we have some other speakers as mm -hmm. well, Ms. Mickelson? Yes. Would you like to go in and hear from the speakers? Uh, yes. Well, we, Mr. Baugh, are you there yet? I am here. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Baugh. Uh, please proceed. Very good. Thank you. This reminds me of, of the time when I told my kids, open the door. I'm here outside, but they refused to hear my pleas to let me in. Thank you for the chance to be with you tonight. I do have a brief presentation. I think it's important that, you, you, that I share a couple of slides with you. Uh, it would be okay to, to bring that up. Yes, we're working on that right now. Mr. Baugh, the, uh, the site plan is in front of us. Okay, great. I think I'll just say next to, to skip to some of these ones quickly. I think it's important to understand where, where we started and, and what we've been doing. This site was zoned in 04, site plan review in 07, and it always showed two buildings 38 feet tall right along the canal where our present building is today. Go to the next slide. And in 2013, there was the administrative approval that allowed a 50 foot tall building to be exactly where our plan building is today. And so the reason why it's important to kind of highlight those two facts is because um, what we are proposing are buildings in the exact same location as those buildings and with heights that are similar or less than what has been previously approved. Let's go to the next slide. Um, this is the waypoint proposal and it's a, a building of three stories with garage at the 26 uh, foot level on the south side and 37 foot level. If we can go to the next slide. It's important, I think, you see where we started and to know where we've ended up. And on this next slide, you'll see where it says garage before. And that shows you how tall our building was with the solar canopies atop the building and the trash bins. And from this is where we started last October. And we started to make a revisions going forward. If we go to the next slide, I'll, I'll skip through all the many different versions we did between October to March. But by the time we came to, to visit with you in March, we started to show a, a tiered garage that had 26 feet at its southern level, 37 feet at its next level, and then you can see the 50 foot office building behind the garage. But we started to add enhanced landscaping and screening. But what we heard at that time was, uh, for example, to, to bring and introduce a different type of element. If we go to the next slide, you'll see what that screening started to look like with the perforated metal in between the different floors. <clears throat> We realized though that that was not sufficient, not enough, so we retooled it. Let's go to the next slide and you'll see um, some changes that we made in early April. And the purpose of these changes on, on that next slide is to show, there you go, is to show you how we started to make these um, screenings start to break up the roof line and provide some undulation. Uh, as we started to communicate with staff, we realized there was new direction that we needed to follow. So if you go to the next slide, you'll see an example of a parking garage in Phoenix near the Arizona Biomedical Campus. And this is um, direction that we received from um, staff in the council office to uh, model as far as quality and, and design for our development here. So if you go to the next slide, you'll start to see how we pick up some of these elements from that um, direction we received. So uh, you'll start to see how we have the uh, horizontal banding the screening, the elements that start to break up that facade with different colors, materials, pop-outs, and features. If you go to the next slide, you can see where we finally have landed. And with this plan, we have the heights at 20, 26 feet, at 37 feet, and then the office building behind at 50 feet. And all of those heights are consistent with the heights that were approved in 07, 
2013 and also consistent with the heights that are in this area. But what we've been able to accomplish is I think a, a, a better design garage in response to some of that feedback. If you go to the next slide, there was some comments that we received from the neighbors on Thursday. Um, and as part of that, there was a suggestion that we add a landscape. I think the word they use is a berm. It looks a little bit more like a hill. So this is an illustration they provided us to, to build up this hill on the south side of the garage. Unfortunately, there is no other hill-like element along the canal. And so it doesn't really match the consistency of the existing park as it is today. But more importantly, it really wasn't practical for the construction purposes or even the circulation or the fire apparatus or even the surface parking. So we started to make some changes here. And some things we did as an alternative was adding a 40-foot masonry screen wall at every level of the garage. So as cars park, if they are to park facing south, the screen wall will block out any headlights. We provided larger landscape areas, um, greater tree plantings and more shrubs. If you go to the next slide, you'll see um, a comparison between what the city requires for landscape requirements versus what we are proposing. And you can see a left column and a right column. And just for some kicks and giggles, I'll just illustrate some things here. We have over 221 trees provided, whereas only 145 are required. And those trees are all planted at 48 inch box rather than the 24 inch box or the 36 inch box. If you go to the next slide, and this is wrapping up our summary, we have tried to redesign that south elevation following the direction received, comparing this to the other biomedical campus garage building. We've added the screen walls at each level of the garage to block it out in addition to the um, enhanced architecture. And then we have substantial landscaping above and beyond what the city requirements. So entire rows of trees planted along the canal, 48 inch box trees, whereas only 24 or 36 are required. Substantially far more trees and shrubs than are required by code. If you go to the next slide, um, we have added under that good neighbor policy, the automatic light dimming in the garage. So while it's normally at four foot candle, it will automatically drop down to one foot candle after um, 10 minutes of non-activity in the garage. Uh, the, the lighting in the office building will automatically extinguish after 20 minutes of non-use. And then with regards to the poles, um, there is a request that we remove the light poles atop the garage and do wall pack. But unfortunately, the wall pack doesn't give you the, the, requ the required coverage for photometrics. So we have swapped out some light poles for some wall packs. And then we've moved our light poles to the back third of the garage on the northern end. And so there's no more um, light poles along the middle part or on the southern side close to neighbors. And it's, of course, there's also some light shield that will be installed with those. So in summary on that good neighbor policy, there will be an on-site contact person providing there, light control, noise control, and landscape maintenance. As we look through the comments that we got from the neighbors on Thursday of last week, we uh, were able to address some things, but not able to address all things. But I think in particular, when I looked at the list, having the screen walls on all levels of the parking garage was a request that we could accommodate. Um, having the lighting poles addressed from 25 to 15, among other things, is something that we were able to, to deal with. Having the lights extinguished, I know they think they preferred 10 minutes, but we thought 20 minutes would be fair and reasonable. Um, there's even things regarding the types of trees to be planted on the south side of the garage are Mondale ash and um, willow acacia which are planned at the, at the request and as part of our proposal. So I do appreciate their, their effort and willingness on this. I, I can say that from our side, um, this is a better project because of their involvement. Although I can't say that I've been able to satisfy all their comments or concerns. I certainly appreciate where this plan has gone because of that feedback and um, insight. And I just wanted to share that with you at the end of the day, Mayor and Council, this is consistent with your general plan. It's consistent with your zoning. It's consistent with the PAD. It's consistent with all the heights in the existing office park, it complies with all your site plan review criteria. And I think that's why your staff is able to make a recommendation of approval and why your planning commission was able to unanimously support it too. So I appreciate you giving me the chance to share this and I, I'll, I'll be, I guess I'll, I'll be brief and, and end my presentation, but available for any comments or questions that you might have. Thank you, Mr. Baugh. Council, do we have any questions for the applicant's attorney? All right, thank you. Uh, why don't we proceed with the hearing from those who have requested to speak. Uh, Ms. Mickelson, uh, uh, how many requests to speak do we have? 
We have about five requests to speak. Should we begin with those folks that are on the phone sure. and then? Mm -hmm. The first speaker is Shauna Boyle. Thank you, Ms. Boyle. Hi. Yes, hello, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead, thank you. Okay, thank, thank you. Um, our request as neighbors to this proposed development have forced to evolve, been forced to evolve throughout this process. Initially, we did not want this to be built in our backyard at all. We were told that we couldn't stop them from building it. Then we came up with the compromise to build the garage underground. We were told that they can't put it underground. Now we have a new compromise in a dispute between two sets of property owners. We have continued to make large compromises in our requests and the developers have barely budged. As our new request, we would like a berm to be built, as you saw mentioned, along the south side of the garage. The berm solves several of our concerns at once. We have consistently be, been concerned about light pollution. The berm, along with tall trees planted at the top of it, would block light from the bottom portion of the garage and help to screen light from the higher northern portion of the garage, as well as light from the three-story building to the north. Mr. Baugh's uh, presentation with hiding the light poles does not answer that there's a three-story building towering over the garage we still have to deal with. We also are concerned about noise from cars and people in the garage. The berm would dampen the noise significantly. The visual appeal of the berm is much better than an overpowering concrete structure. Additionally, a landscape berm would have a cooling effect rather than heat radiating off two football fields of concrete surrounded by asphalt. A landscape berm along the canal path would be a great addition to the city. A 600 foot long feature along the canal, something that adds beauty to the canal path that many residents fear walking on now due to their dreary appearance. The city should be fighting for the berm along with us. It is in line with that Mesa, West Mesa community heat project mentioned at the beginning of this meeting. The developers may say that the berm will be too much added cost, but remember they already have a cost savings from their initial budget because they remove solar panels and the southern portion of the third and fourth floors of the garage. Also the berm, berm could be built from excavation dirt. They're having to dig out for the building anyway. Additionally, a landscape berm would reduce the cost on trees. We would be asking for less trees overall. So, you know, like they just said, they flat out said, no, we can't build a berm. Please don't let that be the final answer to this request. This is almost all we have heard from the developers. No, we can't do that. Uh, they, there's no way they could have truly taken the time to investigate this. We got one slide with kind of three answers about fire codes and stuff. Um, before they just tell us, and by us, I mean our neighborhood in the city, no, we can't do that. Ask them for real data. Ask them for documentation. Let's look into this more. Maybe it doesn't have to be a solid, continuous, contiguous berm. Maybe there can be some breaks in between. Let's work with this a little bit more rather than just telling us no, no, no. We know they have the money to do it. Just not wanting to do it is not good enough. They're supposed to be drafting a good neighbor policy with us. The city gave it that title. City Council, you can make this berm a requirement for this development to move forward. It does not seem that the developers will be making any major compromises without a push from you. Require that they add a landscape berm that covers the two stories or 26 foot height of the southern border of the garage with a tall row of evergreen model pine and acacia silencia trees at the highest portion of the berm. Grant the berm requirement and we can move forward to work on the details with the planning director. If you don't feel that it is possible to require this of them tonight, then grant a continuance so we can have more time to properly draft the good neighbor policy with back and forth discussion. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Next speaker is Joshua Boyle. Thank you. Mr. Boyle. Josh Boyle, are you there? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Please proceed. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, thank you. Sorry about that. Yes, my name is Joshua Boyle. I own the property at 1328 West Mountain View. Thank you for giving me a, a little bit of time to speak. Um, so I echo my, my wife's comments, or I, I guess I should say perhaps amen to them, and, and then also add my own, which is in particular that we are asking to have some more time um, to this, and I, I am very, very grateful um, to Council Member Freeman for, you know, giving us now a second continuance, um, you know, once before and then once at the last meeting, um, which I appreciate. I think it has been helpful as we've worked more with uh, the developers 
Uh, but I think that we, well, excuse me, I, I, I absolutely believe that we're going to need some more time to keep working on this. Um, please know that there's been uh, no slacking on our part in this. Uh, we have tried, though, to meet as a neighborhood to try to get everybody's points understood so that rather than uh, Mr. Ba and the developers getting you know, 10 different emails from 10 different neighbors about, well, I want this and I want that. We've really tried to get on the same page, but that does take a little bit of time for us all to get on the same page and to uh, get a response to the developers, uh, which is why we, we did get our um, documents over last Thursday. The, the trouble though, because we were given two weeks is now for the first time we're hearing about some of these things. And, and I'm frankly, I'm, I'm glad on some of the points that Mr. Ba raised um, but I want to make sure that we really have the specificity so that rather than this project being approved here today, that we make sure that you know, we're on the same page, we know exactly what there was going into this good neighbor agreement. And even though it may not be perfectly what the neighborhood wants, at least everybody has a clear understanding, this is the document. Um, because once the city council approves this project, um, and I don't doubt that um, Anana is not going to do great work with I'm still trying to make sure that this uh, good neighbor agreement goes into pr place properly, but I think we really lose any power as uh, citizens of Mesa once the city council approves this project. Um, at, at that point, we're, we're really left with w whatever it is that finally gets into the document. I don't believe we can pull it back and come back to the city council meeting. So uh, some other items just to point out that we still don't have specificity on is, where is the entry and exit to this parking garage? Uh, it may be towards our neighborhood. It may be towards the other buildings in the complex. We don't know that yet. And the renderings, um, although they don't show an entry and exit, you don't know if they're just en uh, renderings. So also another issue with the images that they showed is that the trees in their images appear to be right along the canal, which I don't believe is possible. Um, I would love it, by the way. I, Mesa used to have wonderful uh, dirt canals that had beautiful trees um, and it's uh, progress, I suppose, that we have concrete now. I'd love if there were trees right along the canal, but I don't think that's possible. And so I think that those images are misleading. And so, um, so it, Again, our request would be that we could please have some more time um, so that we can get things really specific because for the very first time tonight, and again, granted, we just gave them our information on Thursday, but for the first time tonight, we really heard what their response was to our proposals. And I believe that there should be some more back and forth. Uh, you could give us a continuance two weeks out, or perhaps we need a little bit more time than that, a month or, or something like that. I know it may seem like, but come on, we keep giving you continuances, but that's right, this is a complex project. And I think we've made some very good progress. I think we're close to the finish here. Um, and But I would ask for a continuance because I think that there needs to be more time for more back and forth. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Boyle. Next speaker is Jan this is Janice Jakes. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Please proceed. Thank you. 1318 West Mountain View Drive. Um, I have a few thoughts. Uh, we, I, I agree with uh, Josh and Shauna about, we thought this was going to be more of a back and forth, and this was the first time that we saw what um, Adam just showed. It was really hard to see in such a small picture, so uh, I'm going to you know, go ahead with my spiel and some of it um, may have already been addressed. Um, we really would like to see a berm, really don't understand why, didn't really understand why we could not see a berm. So we're looking for more of that type of a design. We would love to see stronger, healthier trees on the south side. Um, Adam, you did mention a certain number of trees, but from what we've seen from the past drawings, most of them are on the north side. Um, we'd like to see have the the side facing the neighbors be as lush as the north side so again i couldn't really tell by the drawings in that small screen if that was the case but the past drawings did not show that they showed almost twice as many trees on the north side and then as far as screening um i don't really know how to advise what type of screening because i'm not an architect i just know we'd like to see articulation depth some more design and we want to block the light, block the light. And that includes the east and the west sides. Uh, and by the way, we have gone personally and looked at Tempe Art Center. And uh, I know um, Mr. Freeman mentioned that, and most of us do not care for that 
particular design and screening. As far as lighting, um, Adam already mentioned looking, we were looking for wall pack lighting. I don't, he said no, so, but we were wishing for that. At the last meeting, um, the developer said that my husband Perry's light was unrealistic. And so we're wondering what what is your plan? I You did mention that they're going to be to the north side, so, but can't you still see them? Uh, I, I'm not sure, but it seems like they would still be tall and you'd still be able to see them beyond the buildings. Maybe I'm wrong on that. I was gonna mention about the timers. You did say now 20 minutes. Uh, I believe that's like a motion detector. And so does the wind affect it? And will it be flashing like a strobe light kind of thing? And I, I'm not trying to be uh, ignorant or sarcastic, but like, what are the details on that kind of a motion detector, that kind of a, a, a timer? And then one more thing, and I couldn't tell again by the small pictures, but Michael Monroe sent us two pictures about a week ago. And I don't know if council has seen them or if they just, he just sent them to the neighbors. But as far as the building design, couldn't really tell about any articulation or depth from that picture. And then that second, the other picture that, uh, that Michael sent, um, I'm totally confused. And I think J Josh mentioned it there. If, if I was seeing it right, and there are big trees on our side, the neighbor's side of the canal, which is right behind my fence, my, that that's, that's, SRP property, and there's also not room for those big trees. So that picture, if I'm seeing it right, is completely misleading and pretty much impossible. So, um, and then again, uh, I, I don't, I'm also confused as how we can resolve this tonight when we're just seeing small pictures that Adam just showed and not really understanding the exact specifics and details. It's just a very, I know that, uh, We've been told that we will get more support after continuing on this, but this is a really uneasy way to end. Um, we need more back and forth. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. The next speaker is Perry Jakes. Okay, good evening. Can you hear me? Yes, Mr. Jakes. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> I'm Perry Jakes, 1318 West Mountain View Drive. Um, thank you for hearing my concerns. I also want to second the motion or second uh, the thanks to Mr. Freeman for extending this one for the last two weeks. But with that said, um, we've been going back and forth about, for instance, my wife already touched on it, but Adam Baum said that I misrepresented what a three level parking garage would look like all lit up at night and in the last meeting. And so I don't know where his rendering is. I've asked him to provide one but I haven't seen anything from them. We'd like to see one if we could. And again, like my wife said, the pictures that are being shown is the first time I've seen them or any of us have seen them. And the size on our computers are about the size of a, a, a postage stamp. So we can't tell anything of what it was. We've asked for this stuff and we haven't seen any of it. Um, where are the renderings on how we are going to cover the light intrusion from the 44 foot foot light of um, the stairwells that go up on both ends of the parking garage that go to 44 foot height. It looks like they're open, which they're probably gonna have to be lit up all night long. But what are we gonna do to cover those up? I haven't seen anything on that. And then my wife also talked about, and I would like to is where is the articulation from the horizontal lines that was asked for them to provide? Is there a picture? Is there something that we could see? I think he showed something tonight about where he got to where it is, but we haven't seen any of this stuff. And we say articulation, we also think in and out or so as well, but it still looks very horizontal. I'm not sure it blocks the light either as, in, in any of the stuff I've seen so far. Um, if we could recently have um, the, the drawings that he gave to us so we can look at them and go through them and agree. And I like the statement that why would we accept this now when we haven't seen any of this stuff? We thought this last two weeks would be a lot of, of give and take. It wasn't that way. One of the things we recently asked Adam Baum to produce some of the renderings, he was promised us a long time ago and his reply, his reply was, where are yours? Um, thought that was sort of rude, uh, actually. So I also want to comment that he keeps bringing up the 2007, like I tried to give a history lesson myself that I knew of last time. He talked about how the buildings would have been built in front of us. It was, would have been six buildings instead of five. 
The difference was he's saying they were 37 feet tall. That's true, but th just like the building out here, we wouldn't be looking at something lit up all night. They would have screens on them, they would do it. We'd be able to look over the top of them and not look at lights on top of a parking garage. And the other thing I want to comment on, he says, well, we've done such a great job of making this site, is that the original site build out was about 440,000 square feet. You add this new building in, the number five, it's another 152,000 square feet. And then you add a 340,000 square feet parking garage. If you really take that up, those are buildings that equal just under a million square feet over here. That was never the intention that we ever thought of when we saw this parking with this development going back there. That was never, ever talked about. So anyway, with that said, um, I'd like to like to ask that you do not let this project move forward until we understand what the, they're building. It would be the right thing to do for this. I know we talk about the city of Mexico going back and what, what and Adam Ba always talks about, we're allowed to do this, we're allowed to do this. When this was farmland and it turned over to the city as us so they could put codes to it and building it, none of us ever expected this would ever happen. So it's shame on us, I guess, for not following this and being involved with these when they were developing the codes for the and the billing site for this. But this is egregious of what they're doing. And anyway, I'd like to see what the other renderings are and then we can talk about it. But if this is going to be a decision tonight, I think it's wrong to move forward with the project at this time until we see these other renderings that we've been asking um, Lincoln Properties and Alan Ball to produce and we haven't seen them yet. Thanks very much for your time. Thank you. The next speaker is Philip Bramson. Um, yes, this is Phil Bramson. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can, Mr. Bramson. All right, thank you. Uh, Mayor Giles and city council members. My name is Phil Bramson. My mother resides at 1242 West Mountain View. Uh, she's lived in this home for 24 years and in the city of Mesa for nearly 70 years. The Waypoint 5 office building and associated parking garage have been a lightning rod for opposition by the residents of the neighboring Mountain View estates. The city's design review board, planning commission, and this council have heard from many of the neighborhood's residents who have passionately voiced their opposition to the project, its proximity to the existing homes, potential noise and lighting concerns, and the aesthetics of the project when completed. It seems that we have all reached the point that the neighborhood is left with trying to negotiate the best looking and least obtrusive parking garage, along with its associated landscaping, interior and exterior lighting, screening of the south facade of the structure, long-term upkeep of the facility and landscaping and a mutually acceptable good, na good neighbor agreement between the developer and the neighborhood. Unfortunately, the neighborhood does not feel that all of the questions in concerns that have been raised have been adequately answered and or in some instances even addressed. Primary of these concerns are the elevations and aesthetics of the south facade and the screening landscaping of the same south exposure. We don't believe those issues are going to be resolved during the course of this meeting tonight and have deep concerns as to how planning staff continues to negotiate with the developer in the future regarding the issues of garage screening landscaping and lighting. We implore you and the planning director to include the neighborhood in the process of approving the final building elevations and landscaping plan. We are very concerned that without neighborhood review, comment and input, the project will simply not reflect many of the desired modifications that are so important to the neighbors. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Branson. The next speaker is Ruth Ann Showalter. Ms. Showalter, are you on the line? Ms. Show, uh, Ruth Ann Showalter, are you there? Uh, can you unmute your phone? I, hello? Yes, we hear you. Please go ahead. Oh, wonderful. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Ruth Ann Showalter. Um, I am at 1262 West Mountain View Drive. Um, Specifically, I would like to address the proposed landscape plan that was originally shared with us um, on April 3rd. I think that I believe it's the most updated uh, plan and also conforms to some of the data that uh, Mr. Bao quoted as, as far as the 
um, uh, planting coverage and quantity of trees. Um, as much as the neighborhood is completely behind the berm idea to address the impacts that we're so concerned about, we also realized that plantings and especially the trees um, that would be on the site are what we really are going to rely on to try to screen us against dramatic 24 hours a day impacts that we fear in regards to light, sound, and the visual weight of the structures, the height, the length, and the proximity relative to our homes. Um, look at the plan. And I, I don't know if that's something that, that y'all, or if you just had this banged over your head so much that you actually remember what the site plan looks like. Um, with the garage, there's um, a screen of trees on the north side of the garage, which would be the area that um, is like the little courtyard um, that the tenants are treated um, that are between the building and, and the parking garage. And then there's the south face, south length of the garage that would become our new, um, our new reality. If we compare those, that's, uh, that's where a lot of our concern is as far as we're trying to address with trees because we feel that as residents we should at the bare minimum replicate what's been what is going to be on the north side of the garage screening the tenants from the view of the garage versus what we're getting on the north side of the garage there's 23 large trees planted uh, uh, in a line over overlapping each other um, on, our, on the south side that we would be facing, there's nine acacia trees. On the north side, these large trees are planted approximately 20 feet apart on center. On the south side, nine acacia trees that would be up against the garage are planted 70 feet apart. It's confusing for us to look at this plan and, and given how much we it into everyone's head how concerned we are about trying to cover up the garage and cover up the lighting effects and the sound effects. We look at this and, and think, are we being forgotten yet again? Also on the north side, at the ground level, there is an eight foot tall mesh screen uh, planted with colorful flowering vines that runs the almost 600 foot length of the garage facing the courtyard again for the tenants. On our side, it's a three foot tall concrete unadorned wall running that length. Also, um, I did not catch the final number that uh, Mr. Bow presented at about the increased number of trees that we on the site plan um, for ticks and giggles, but I did look at the plan and counted out that of the over 200 trees, I, I don't remember how many more than that, only 54 of those trees are on the south side. So again, once again, tenants are the ones benefiting from the increased amount of trees. There. Um, one other thing, and I apologize if I'm, I'm going over on time, um, wanted to address the kinds of trees that were that are on here. Again, just because we want something that's effective trees are deciduous trees, meaning that for the vast majority of the year, we are not really getting a lot of visual or sound relief um, from, from, the, from the building. So we would like to see no more new Palo Verde trees planted, despite that Palo Verde trees are currently the predominant planting on the site. Um, but during most of the year, the silhouette of a Palo Verde tree is just skeleton. It also doesn't have the necessarily necessary height or canopy width relative to the proposed structure to anything for us other than look good on a site plan. Um, the willow acacia, the modal pine um, that are currently on there are acceptable trees and we would like to see those increased and again increase the planting to the same level that they have on the north side. An additional tree to break up the monotony of two trees um, is the Indian rosewood or the sisu tree. This is a fat, also a fast growing, tall, wide canopy, 
lusher tree. It's a semi-evergreen, but it is on the Arizona Municipal Water Use Association um, site, which I believe um, for low water use trees is something maybe that the city of Mesa um, require. Um, and, and, and lastly, we want to make, uh, we want these trees because length of time to establish the trees is also a factor for us because when we're told more of their potential as far as height and coverage in five to seven or eight or more years, that's a big concern for us. And when we look at uh, aerial photos of the site, going back to 2012, when most, when so many of the uh, current Palo Verde trees excuse me, um, back then, and we compare it to a 2020 aerial, then um, there's not much of a change in the canopy coverage of the site. And that's over an eight year period. Again, that's just for a Palo Verde tree, but, um, but that's just to show you why we have such a concern about having larger, taller, fatter, as grown trees. Um, I just want to conclude uh, and again, I'm so sorry about time, but by saying that we do appreciate that the applicant has increased the planting coverage to exceed the city's minimum planting requirements. But as residents, we have to point out that exceeding the minimum is still not adequate coverage to address these impacts that we're so concerned about that's driven our opposition since day one, and that so many of you who come out and visited us on site could, could see are valid um, pack concerns. Thank you so much for, for giving me the time to talk. I appreciate it. Thank you, Michelle Walter. Mayor, that's the end of the comment. Uh, the speakers on the line, there are two comment cards submitted. Um, they wish to have their comment read into the record. The first is Lori Kagiyama, and she says, I wish the reviewers to put in oversight on behalf of the Mountain View community to be sure the Lincoln properties uphold the changes they have promised to make to lessen the horrific impact of their development on this historic Mesa neighborhood. The next speaker is Dick Gertler, states, we are not pleased with the south side of the garage, as in the lack of density and the type of trees. We, we see a lot on the north side, which is lovely for that entrance, but, is not, but does not do much for the neighborhood. A berm would be a great visual. It does not appear that things can be resolved tonight since we have not seen much from the developer as far as the garage screening, adding trees to the south side, and their new plans. Will you, our city, continue this conversation and have our back? As this appears, we still need more back and forth. Those are all of the comments. All right, thank you. Uh, Mr. Ma, is there anything that you'd like to, uh, to add before we, uh, we hear from the council? Yes, Mayor and Council, thank you for that. Um, I guess I just want to clarify some things that I, that I heard worth um, addressing. The neighbors at the last council meeting said they had some changes to the neighbor policy. We were looking forward to getting those, but it wasn't until almost uh, 10 days later, Thursday, that I got them for the first time. So we scrambled to address what we could, but not a lot of time. I, the first time I've ever heard about a, a berm after working on this case for a year was last Thursday. And it's not necessarily a berm, it's a probably a 15 foot tall hill that goes up almost two thirds of the height of the garage. Um, we did share these elevations with the neighbors. Um, Janice was copying on the roof, uh, Shauna Boyle and others. In fact, we got a comment back regarding a, a question of clarification for dimensions on these elevations we shared with them last week. So um, I just felt it was important to, to highlight that we did share that information. Um, and obviously when we got some comments from the city council last week to change our elevations, we began working on them right away. Um, it's just that it went through a couple of different rounds of changes in the last 10 days just to find something that was agreeable. Uh, we, this wasn't our first option. Uh, we probably had two or three different versions between last council and this one, but this third one was the one that most closely aligned with that biomedical building. And once we found that um, alignment is when we were able to share it with the neighbors. So we've done our best to be responsive and uh, just want to make sure that you guys understood that we did share that with them um, contrary to what's been said. All right, thank you, Mr. Council, uh, comments, Council Member Spillsbury? Um, not to beat this to death, but is the, can you speak to the berm 
just specifically how much you maybe researched it. Um, I did drive past the Gilbert um, Memorial Park Cemetery out on Queen Creek Road, and I actually saw a berm that looked really nice. I, hadn't, I couldn't really picture it, but then I happened to be driving by and saw it, and it actually did look really nice. So I just wondered how much that had been researched. I feel for these neighbors. <laughs> Uh, excellent question. Uh, I'll be honest, the, the berm, after working on his case for a year, or longer than a year, just came up for the very first time Thursday, I think midday or afternoon. So I, I, I'll admit that the time to research that has been brief. It's here Monday afternoon. But I, I can tell you, when our architect look at it, there's a few challenges that we have to work with. First of all, we have a, a, a large um, easement that goes across the back of our property. To install that berm requires us to remove parking. And that berm just can't go instantly 15 feet tall right away. You have to step it back over a significant distance. So you lose about 50 to 70 parking spaces. You then start to affect your drive aisles and your circulation, your fire apparatus routes. And so it isn't just a simple addition of adding some dirt on the back of a building. Uh, it, and it really couldn't go much taller than, because um, you only have about 20 or so feet to play with. So how do you go a berm 15 feet tall? But at the end of the day, it, you, your ability to plant trees in that berm are also restricted because it'd be such a steep slope for those trees to take root and then to grow. It, it just simply isn't a practical solution construction and wise. Okay, so just we're not talk, the space talking that three you or have. four foot berm. Okay. My, my apologies for interrupting you. No, it's hard when you're not standing right here. Um, yeah, so just the space that you have doesn't make the berm feasible in order to get it to the height that they want. That is correct. Okay, I, I did find the pictures on the presentation really hard to see. So I, I don't know. I, I understand their frustration with that because I was squinting right in front of me and I couldn't really see what the words said at all on some of those slides. So I would appreciate those being sent to the neighbors, but... That's all for me. Thank you, Ms. Pillsbury. Uh, Nana, can you just rehearse for us? I, I know I, it, after a, 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 our action today, this remind us all that this still goes to design review and, and you uh, as the planning director will, will give some stipulations to the design review board before they meet, correct? And, and a lot of the things that the uh, applicant has, has talked about even tonight you'll be incorporating into your stipulations to the design review board, is that correct? Mayor yeah, Council, so the case has already gone through design review. It went to design review board in October, and as part of the design review process, they review and make recommendation to me as a planning director. I have the final approval. So some of the changes or recommendation they made was for the applicant actually to go back to including some breaking elevations, show different type of materials and really enhance the appearance of the parking garage, which is basically what they've presented. So now it's up to me to look at it to make sure that their new elevations meet the recommendations of the design review board and then I can approve it. Also, as part of the approval today, there is a condition of approval which required the developer to basically follow that design review process, which is basically their recommendation and then my approval. As part of my approval, there will be a condition of approval for them to comply with the um, garage elevations, the landscaping, and all the additional documents that, that the good neighbor policy as well, which will be binding because if they don't follow that, that will be in violation of the um, approval. Okay, thank you for reminding me what the process was. Council, additional comments? Mr. Freeman. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. I just wanted to point out, you know, I appreciate the neighborhoods uh, weighing in and, and their decisions. You know, I've been to the property numerous times and they have as well, and the property is impeccable. I mean, the landscaping is impeccable, the trees, the mature trees, and I know that they've elevated their landscape design and it'll take a while for those trees to mature. But there's also the Phoenix Val Vista water treatment line that goes uh, between the canal and the parking garage. It's an eight foot diameter pipe. Um, about two years ago I was there when they opened up an access shaft to access the pipeline and re-line the interior of that line and it was very impressive. So I do know that that parking lot, 
a portion of it is used to access a pipeline. So I don't know about building a berm that would encroach and the parking gr uh, area would go on top of the pipeline. I don't know all that, uh, those easement restrictions. So uh, I know this isn't gonna be perfect for them, but uh, at the end of the day, I think that this will be a beautiful project and it's an employment area and we, we need this and I appreciate the neighborhood's input again and the good neighbor policy as well as the elevation revisions. And it'll be, uh, it'll be nice. So with that, uh, I don't know if council member Thompson would want to say something. I'm sorry, Mayor, I probably okay, sure. usurped you. <laughs> no, no, not at all. Uh, Mr. Thompson, would you like, do you have a comment? Yeah, you know, I've, um, I like the project. I, I said it before. I think um, the developer and the zoning attorney have gone back and forth uh, with the neighborhood. I think, you know, the interaction with the neighborhood has, has brought some great things to light, uh, made this project even that much better than it was when it originally came in. But at this point, um, I would like just to make a motion that we move this project forward. All right, thank you. Mr. Thompson's made a motion for approval. Uh, is there a second? The varying buttons being pushed. Mr. Freeman's made a second. Uh, I'll weigh in. I, I, first of all, I, I want to, I've, I've met with the neighbors, as I know many of my colleagues have, and I know Mr. Freeman and other council members have, have gone to this property uh, and uh, looked in, from the backyards at this project, and, and uh, I just want to express my appreciation to, to them for their efforts tonight, as well as uh, the neighborhood. But both the neighborhood and the applicant, I think, have, have worked very uh, hard, but they've been uh, very respectful and very productive, and. And I'm glad that we have taken our time with this case. We've continued it twice already uh, in an effort to, to, to be uh, responsive to the neighborhood's concerns, and I believe we've done that. Uh, I think the neighbors should feel a, a real sense of accomplishment, and this, this is a much better project than it was when it first walked in the planning department's doors. The, as has been indicated, the, 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 this proposal, our, our heights that are similar to or less than what the, what the applicant was entitled to. And uh, the, as a result of the neighbors expressing their concerns, they've, uh, they've accomplished the, the, uh, the lowered heights of the garage, the tiered garage, uh, the enhanced landscaping package that in, involves now over 220 trees, 50 of which will be on the, uh, at least on the, on the, the north side uh, the additional screening, the increased quality of the building design. I think it's a much more, as I compare the, the renderings of the buildings before and after, this is much more attractive. Uh, the screen walls preventing headlights from, uh, from uh, shining onto the neighborhood. The good neighborhood policy with, with the lighting policies uh, for both the garage and the office building uh, and the elimination of some of the light poles. So, those are all uh, hard fought for uh, concessions, but I think that, that uh, I'm, uh, again, I appreciate the good faith uh, that was demonstrated by both sides of, of this, and, uh, and so I will be uh, supporting the project. Council, additional comments? Vice Mayor. Yes, I had one question on the landscaping I'm a little confused on. So on the number of trees on the south side, has that been increased on this go-round? Or should I ask Mr. Baugh? Mr. Baugh, are you still on the line? I am on the line. Thank you for unmuting me. Um, we, there's a limitation on how many, where we can plant the trees on the south side, and it's not because we are um, choosing not to go there. You can't put them within the easement, and you, there's a part of the canal which might look like our property, but it is not. So we have planted all where we can on the south side in the areas where possible. One of the challenges you have to work with is make sure that your canopies on the trees have sufficient room to grow. And so when you start putting them too close to each other, then trees can't get a full canopy, and then they can't be as successful as you want. So we have planted the trees precisely as much as we could on the south side also recognizing the limitations of the easement as well as the canal landscape that we don't own and where we cannot put trees. So we have, uh, and, and I guess one more thing just worth mentioning, I, I'm sorry I didn't catch this sooner. There was a request from the neighbors to enhance some of the trees areas 
outside of the proposed rezone case, right behind building four, which isn't a part of this. You know, we've are even committed to looking at that area to see if there's more room to plant trees in there, recognizing that they already have tree canopies. And so wherever we can plant that, we have to make sure that we don't um, affect that canopy or that ability for that canopy to grow. But we still remain committed to, to reviewing even things that are outside of the scope of the zoning case. Sorry to belabor this, but on the south side of the parking garage, have you increased the number of trees from the first presentation till now? Yes, we have. And can you refresh my memory of how many trees or what percentage or of the increase on there? Yes, uh, Mayor. Uh, council member, this is Michael Monroe with Lincoln Property Company. I would like to answer that question if I could. Yes, go ahead, Mr. Monroe. Uh, we have increased the landscaping trees from the last meeting to this uh, previous meeting. We've added more 48 inch box trees uh, along the canal bordering our uh, property at the canal line. We've added increased 48 inch box trees uh, immediately. Uh, adjacent to the uh, parking garage. We also added uh, a couple of other 48 inch trees that we noticed there were 24 inch box trees in some of the landscape islands. And again, keep, keep in mind that we went from an eight foot uh, code required landscape island to a 10 foot landscape island to accommodate the 48 inch box trees. So there was an increase there. We also, um, I know you're speaking about just trees, but we also increased the shrubs along the canal. Um, and we've uh, taken a sidewalk that is at the immediate eastern building and continued that along the canal. So we have a walkway path on our property as opposed to the canal property. And with that, we wanted to add more landscape shrubs. And we added a couple of pedestrian benches as well. And that's over this past week since last Thursday. This was actually from our last council meeting from two weeks ago. Okay, I see. Um, thank you for that. Um, just for the uh, constituents, the citizens, and the residents in this neighborhood, I'm not a landscape architect by any means, but in my experience and working commercial um, parks, berms are very difficult for landscaping. Grass or trees has always been a continual problem. I don't. I think a berm is not a solution. It, it, plants don't like berms. They like to retain water, not shed them. We have problems with water here um, and retaining water and even getting water to our plants. So I don't think a berm is going to help you. I do like the, the increase of landscaping and appreciate all the go back. I regret that over this last two weeks, that um, the two parties haven't got together directly and you know, using this time at council to debate it um, with presentations that are difficult for us to see. But I do feel that we've provided ample time in order to resolve the issues. I do appreciate the residents and working hard to make this the best product as possible. And I appreciate the patience of the developer and working with those residents. I would like to see just a little bit more. You know, I just feel like this getting so close, but they need to be one on one. Um, I'm in support of approving this tonight and hopes that they'll continue the conversation to um, do just a, a few more tweaks. Um, but I, I think we've provided enough time and it is um, an adequate um, design for the park. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Mr. Luna. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, you know, it was interesting because I had the opportunity to actually go visit some of those homes and to look, look at the development. And it is, when you look at it, it is stark when you see this building. But it's, you know, we, uh, we've delayed it and continue to delay. We've, we, we do really need to make a decision. I appreciate the developer actually uh, providing additional plants and trees to, to certainly uh, block some of the, the structure as well as to provide some additional uh, greenery in, in and around the area. Uh, and, and quite frankly, this is a difficult situation. We're often placed in this situation to make these hard decisions. And so I respect the residents. I respect where they're coming from. Uh, they have to live with it. Um, but, we, but we know that the developers, good. They, they've really tried in good faith effort to try to get this going. And so 
I, I'm also going to be in support of this project. Uh, uh, I think we've given ample time. I don't know extending it is going to provide, you know, uh, it's going to meet what uh, the residents want. I just think that, you know, we have to continue to move forward in these difficult situations. So, so uh, thank you residents for your, your, uh, your recommendations. Uh, the developer has worked towards uh, trying to, to assist you and support you. And uh, so I'm gonna also be in support of this project. Thank you, Council. Any additional comments? All right, we do have a motion and a second. Uh, please uh, cast your vote. Mr. Thompson, how do you vote? Aye. Thank you. Uh, motion passes unanimously. Um, next item on our agenda is items from citizens present. Ms. Mickelson, do we have any requests to speak? We have one request to speak. Ma Mayor Dale Krogan should be on the line. Thank you, Mr. Krogan. Are you with us? I am. Can you hear me? Yes, Mr. Krogan, we can. We have uh, three minutes allocated for this agenda item per speaker. Great. I'll, I'll talk quickly. Uh, again, my name is Dale Krogan. I'm the president of the United, United Mesa Firefighters Local 2260. My address is 52 South Center. I'm here tonight to talk about firefighter pay, about parity and pay with other fire departments across the ballot. It's, it's more than that. This is about honesty and trust. And I have to tell you, we're having a hard time. We're struggling uh, to trust that city management will honestly work with us in good faith on these issues. The issue of pay was brought up to the city in January of this year. We've had numerous conversations, <clears throat> excuse me, meetings and even presentations on this issue. Our concern is that if this issue is not fixed, the gap will widen and worsen and firefighters will fall further and further and further behind. City management has consistently said that they do not see that this is a problem today and that they're unwilling to work with us on any sort of short-term, long-term, or even one-time fix solutions. We've offered up a number of options only to be shut down at every turn. We really, we can't wait any longer. We can't wait for the city to respond to this issue. And that's why we're here tonight to bring this issue forward. There is way too much information for me to give you all in just three minutes. Therefore, tonight we're going to be sending out a link to you as council and the mayor that has information about firefighter parity and pay. Uh, there's information about the public safety sales tax with some, some, some concerns about the misspending of some of those monies, uh, along with some misleading information that has been put out on this issue by city management. I unfortunately think that this is going to show, this is going to paint a very clear picture of what our concern is. And our concern is that it is hard for city employees and especially firefighters to trust that city management will honestly and in good faith work with us on employee issues, really all employee issues. You know, I feel that the firefighters, we, we've been amazing partners with the city and the community for so many years and in so many different ways. We do this gladly. This is the community in which we serve, right? This is the city in which we serve. So I'm here tonight to share what our clear expectation is. And that is that we want you, Mayor, City Council, to remind city management that what makes Mesa great is great employees. Great employees and great partners should always be treated fairly, honestly, and with integrity. I know this is a non-agenda item, so we don't get the opportunity to have open discussion. But I wanted to thank you for your support on this, and thank you for letting me speak tonight. Thank you, Dale. Uh, Ms. Mickelson, we don't have any other requests to speak. All right, thank you. That concludes the items on our agenda. Is there a motion to adjourn? Thank you, Mr. Luna. And seconded by Ms. Spilsbury. All in favor of adjournment, please say aye. 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 Thank you. We are adjourned. <laughs>